Hey guys welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto was son of Hades and Hera? Naruto XHAREM. Movie. High above the city of New York, hidden by magic, laid the city of Olympus. This heavenly city lay above the Empire State Building, on the 600th floor. It is in this city that we find the Greek gods and goddesses of legend, living their lives in this more modern era. Traveling through the marble streets we arrive at a large meeting hall, aka the throne room of the Olympians. Inside we can see every known Olympian, arrived for the winter solstice meeting. Upon the two largest thrones we see the king and queen of Olympus, Zeus and Hera. On each side of them we can see their brothers, sisters, sons, daughters. To Zeus' right, we have Poseidon, god of the seas, Demeter, goddess of agriculture, Ares, god of war, Athena, goddess of wisdom, and Hephaestus, god of the forge and fire. To Hera's left are Aphrodite, goddess of love, Hermes, god of travelers and thieves, Apollo, god of the sun, Artemis, goddess of maidens and the moon, and Dionysus, god of wine. These are the twelve Olympian gods, who rule over all of Olympus. Also attending the meeting are Hades, lord of the dead, and Hestia, goddess of hearth and home. While not officially Olympians that does not make them any less important than their family. Today, like every other meeting, the gods were arguing. Poseidon and Zeus were having their usual disagreements, air versus water, who did mother love best, etc. Hades, meanwhile, was just staring at them in boredom. He had heard this argument for years. He actually smirked when Hera finally stopped them by smacking both of them upside the head. Apollo and Hermes were talking about pranks they would be pulling or had already done. Artemis just glared at the stupid male pigs as they move on to recent hookups. Aphrodite was checking her makeup while ignoring Ares and Hephaestus as they argued over her. Dionysus was just sitting quietly, reading a wine catalogue, while also ignoring Demeter's lecture on the health benefits of cereal. Athena and Hestia were just sitting quietly, both wondering why their family was so screwed up. Suddenly, a large blue portal appeared in the middle of the throne room, drawing everyone's attention to it. From the portal, six humans and a single cyclops fell out onto the floor. Hey! Watch it pinecone face, you just hit me in the shin!" yelled a boy with sea-green eyes, black hair, and wearing a black jacket over a green shirt and jeans. Not my fault. Death breath knocked me into you! yelled a girl with spiky black hair, a silver jacket and clothes, and an armband. The last of which caused Artemis' eyes to widen slightly. Will you two knock it off? We have more important things to worry about! yelled another girl. This one had blonde hair in princess curls, stormy gray eyes, and a bronze dagger at her side. Before any more could be said, Zeus' anger exploded. Silence. His roar of anger caused the throne room to shake and thunder to boom. The children immediately quieted down, looking to the gods before bowing. Zeus nodded and then said, Now, who are you children? And give me a reason not to throw you from Olympus for trespassing. The first boy, who looked so much like Poseidon only an idiot would miss it, read, Zeus, Ares, and Apollo, looked confused. My lord Zeus, didn't one of you summon us? And, why do you act as if you don't know who we are? He asked in confusion, his reaction mirrored by the others who came with him. Before Zeus could say another word, a flash of light illuminated the room. Once it cleared, three figures stood before the gathered audience. Each of the new beings resembled a woman late in life with eyes that spoke of wisdom long past and from ages onward. The gods gasped and bowed their heads, with Zeus saying, Fates, you honor us with your presence. The children all bowed as well, humbled before the three beings who could control all life, from birth to death and beyond. In turn, each of the fates stepped forward, pronouncing their names and titles. I am Clotho, the spinner, who spins the thread of life, spoke the first. I am Lachesis, the measurer, who chooses the lot in life one will have and measures how long that life shall be, said the second. And I am Atropos, she who cannot be turned, who at death with her shears cuts the thread of life, boomed the third. Then, as one, the fates spoke, we bring you here today, the past and future, to answer the question of one hero. What good can one hero do? Hearing this caused the sea-green-eyed boy to blush, since he had asked the question. In a flash of light, a book appeared in the fates' hands, Clotho spoke again, this book contains the adventure of a single hero, a hero from a dimension very similar to ours. The fact that other dimensions existed shocked everyone there, even the gods. Lachesis spoke next, from this other dimension, 
we shall bring people you shall be intimately familiar with, and a few you would not be. Atropos spoke last, as the fates began to fade, now, we leave it to you to introduce yourselves. And Zeus, the king of the gods flinched at being singled out, touch not a single hair upon the children's heads with those parting words the fates faded back to their own realm. Silence ruled for a few minutes, before Hera spoke up, well then, shall we begin the introductions? Her voice snapped everyone out of their thoughts, and the children each stepped forward to introduce themselves. First, was the blonde-haired, grey-eyed girl. She bowed and spoke proudly, my name is Annabeth, daughter of Athena. She smiled at her mother, who smiled right back. Next up, was a fair-skinned satyr who did nothing to hide his horns and hooves. I am Grover, leader of the satyr and protector of the wilds. His introduction caused Hermes and Dionysus to look at him in surprise. Next was a beautiful girl, whose hair seemed to shimmer between colors along with her eyes. She was slim, but had a powerful aura. Her presence seemed to cause the other demigods to tear up and gasp. I am Selena Beauregard, daughter of Aphrodite. Aphrodite gained a giant smile, immediately pulling Selena to her throne and forcing her to talk about her life. The demigods all smiled at the scene, happy for their friend. The Cyclops came up next, saying, My name is Tyson, son of Daddy Poseidon. He appeared to be very happy to be here, which brought a smile to Poseidon's face. Next was a pale skinned boy, with a mess of black hair and a ripped up aviator's jacket. Nico D'Angelo, his name caused Zeus to wince again and Hades' eyes to widen. Son of Hades everyone expected Zeus to blow up at his brother, so they were surprised when he didn't and just motioned the last two on. Next was the girl dressed like a hunter, Talia Grace, daughter of Zeus and lieutenant of Artemis Hunters. Her introduction caused a few reactions. Hera and Hades both glared at Zeus, who shifted uncomfortably. Artemis looked at her in surprise, and a little fear. What? How can she be my lieutenant? What happened to Zoe? Thought Artemis in trepidation of what could have happened to her best friend. She pushed her thoughts away as the last demigod stepped forward. He held his head high and said, My name is Percy Jackson, son of Poseidon. Now this brought out a reaction from Zeus. Poseidon. You broke the oath. He thundered, pun intended, as he held a white knuckled grip on his master bolt. He would have smote the boy, but he remembered the fate's warning. Everyone rolled their eyes at the dramatics, with Poseidon pointing at Tyla with a raised eyebrow. Sighing, Zeus looked at the book, which had been picked up by Annabeth, daughter of Athena, let us begin reading already. She nodded quickly, eager to read. As she looked at the book, she found a note. Reading it aloud, she said, The name of this book is too big a hint, so we are blocking it from your minds until it is not needed anymore signed the fates she pouted at the fact that she couldn't see the title before sighing and opening the book. The book was levitated out of Percy's hands and over to Hades. Seeing the looks he was getting, he huffed and said, My other son was just attacked by my own employee. I want to know what is going on as soon as possible. No one could blame him for that, seeing as how everyone was slightly worried about the blonde. Seeing no one questioning him Hades began, Chapter 3, Neji was right. Life after the freak show went on like normal, well as normal as it could get in this school. Percy chuckled at this, yeah between two powerful demigods, a thousand-year-old centaur and goat boy over here, everything was completely normal. This got him some laughs from the demigods, Satyr and Chiron, but Hades spoke up in a seemingly calm voice, if you would please, stop interrupting. Percy had the decency to blush and nod to his uncle. For the rest of the year both of the boys were a bit put off by the revelation that Miss Dodds never existed. In her place was a perky blonde woman named Mrs. Kerr. Apollo couldn't help himself, so he asked, was she hot? Artemis just groaned at her idiotic brother. Percy sighed, apparently used to this, just said, she was in her early fifties and happily married. Go near her now and I'll help Artemis castrate you. This last part was said in a dull voice and in response to a slowly moving Apollo, who immediately sat back down in his throne. When either of the boys would ask something about the old hag, people just looked at them like they were nuts. Naruto, however, did like the new teacher. She was a refreshing change from the old crone. Hermes spoke up here, you know, Naruto keeps insulting her. Does he have any respect for those more powerful or superior to him? His answer came in the form of a giant no, make out of Greek fire, which appeared in the middle of the room without any warning. Everyone just sat there quietly before Hermes said, okay then, I like this kid even more. 
This received nods from Poseidon, Apollo, Percy, Nico, Talia, and Ares, and sighs of annoyance from everyone else. Though everyone else seemed to not even know what the hell they were talking about, it seemed like Grover did. He would always hesitate before denying it. He was such a bad liar. Seder. You are getting lying lessons from my sons ASAP when you get back to camp, understood? Hermes said in a strangely serious voice, receiving a nod from the blushing Grover. Something was going on. They knew something had happened at the museum. Anyways, that freak storm continued and at one point it blew the windows out in Percy's apartment. Luckily, Naruto offered him a place to stay until things were fixed and ready to go at his place. Poseidon, Zeus, what are you fighting about now? stated Athena in a deadpan voice. Both sons of Kronos just shrugged, mentally thinking of what could get the other that pissed off. A few days later the biggest tornado ever spotted in the Hudson Valley, touched down only 50 yards from Yancey Academy, which was scary in and of itself. Luckily no one got hurt. Percy started feeling cranky and irritable most of the time. His grades slipped from D's to F's. Athena and Annabeth gasped, the latter turning to glare at a trembling Percy. Seaweed brain, she said in an eerily calm voice, when we get home, you aren't leaving my side until you leak knowledge. Percy, scared for his life, just nodded quickly. He met his uncle's eyes and mouthed red. Please. Hades, for once feeling pity to another person, continued quickly. He got into more fights with Nancy Bobofit and her friends. Ares cheered at the thought of fighting and violence. Aphrodite, seeing his ugly cheering, began thinking about why she liked him. He was sent out into the hallway in almost every class. Naruto was in some of his classes and he had started to feel the same way, difference being that he stayed under control, most of the time. Poseidon nodded to Percy. Sorry about that son, whatever is causing my other to fight with the airhead is affecting your life. He conveniently ignored Zeus glaring. Percy just smiled, it's alright dad. It's like you always say, the sea does not like to be contained. Then he smirked at Nico. Seems Naruto has the Hades temperament too. Calm like the dead, but blows up like a bomb. Nico just smirked, taking it as a compliment. Something odd was going on and they were somehow affected, and it was getting really annoying. Though, when Percy got in trouble for calling their English teacher an old sot, whatever that meant, the school sent a letter to his mom. Athena spoke up next, not noticing the twitch in Hades' right eye, it means a drunkard Jackson, surprising that you would know that saying. It told her that Percy would not be allowed back next year, and this lifted the boy's mood a little, but just a little. Percy missed his mom because he hated the fact that she was with Gabe of all people. The kid was homesick, no surprise there. Ares snorted and said, Mom is boy. Hera sent him a side glare, about to tell him off when Percy beat her to it. Says the over 3,000 year old man who still lives with his parents, Percy calmly stated. Everyone but Ares, who was simmering in anger, burst out laughing. Burn! screamed Hermes and Apollo yelled, high fiving each other. Naruto sighed as he came back to reality. Exam week was coming up soon, and he, like Percy and Grover, had to study. Like Shikamaru says, it's going to be troublesome. XXX the night before the exam started, Naruto and Percy decided to have a study session in Percy's dorm. Throughout the night, Naruto could see that Percy was getting more and more agitated. Finally, he just threw his book across the room. Athena and Annabeth, once again, glared at a cowering Percy. He had faced gods, titans, and a majority of the most threatening monsters ever, but they were cute compared to his angry girlfriend, which no one from the past knew about, and her mother. Temper, temper, Naruto commented, trying to liven up the atmosphere. Sorry, but how the hell am I supposed to remember the difference between Chiron and Karen? Simple, one has an I in their name and the other has an A in theirs. Naruto smartly said with a smirk. Percy slapped his face and gave Naruto a glare. Okay, let me help you then. Chiron, the one with the I, is the trainer of heroes and is a horse's ass. Then we have Karen, the one with the A, is the ferryman of the bead and a greedy ass. Dude just loves Olympian money. Everyone, expect Chiron, laughed at that. Chiron had a pout on his face as he thought, I am not a horse's ass. Cheeky brat. Even Hades chuckled completely agreeing about Karen being a greedy SOB. Is that how you remember everything? Give it a short description and or insult them? Percy asked while trying to hide a smirk. Hey, easier for me to remember stuff like that, 
Naruto smiled, but my way might not be the best for you. Everyone has a different way of remembering stuff. Yeah, Percy said, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I should go see Mr. Brunner. He might have a way to help me. Annabeth smirked and nudged Percy's arm, good idea seaweed brain. He smiled and said, I do have them on occasion wise girl. Athena narrowed her eyes at the two of them, finally noticing how close they appeared to be. Want me to come? Naruto asked yeah, so I don't feel like a total idiot going down there, Percy replied and got up to get his book. Naruto just laughed. They walked downstairs to the faculty offices. Most of them were dark and empty, but Mr. Brunner's door was ajar, with light from his window stretching across the hallway floor. They were three steps away from the door handle when the duo heard voices inside the office. A voice that was definitely Grover's said, worried about Percy and Naruto, sir. Chiron shook his head, I knew we should have talked later. But, he smiled at a slightly blushing Grover, a certain satyr was very worried about his friend. Percy smiled and gave the goat boy a sideways hug. The boys froze at that, nodding to each other as they leaned into eavesdrop. They didn't do this a lot, but when a friend is talking about you to a teacher you'd want to know what was going on. The demigods all nodded to this, fully agreeing. Alone this summer, Grover was saying, I mean, a kindly one in the school. Now we know for sure, and they know too. We would only make matters worse by rushing them, Mr. Brunner said, we need the boys to mature more. But they may not have time. The summer solstice deadline. We'll have to be resolved without them. Let them enjoy their ignorance while they can. Sir, they saw her, their imagination, Mr. Brunner insisted, the mist over the students and staff will convince them of that. Sir, I comma I can't fail my duties again, Grover's voice was choked with emotion, you know what that would mean. Talia sighed, walked over to Grover and smacked him in the head, you didn't fail goat boy. I chose to stay behind. You haven't failed Grover, Mr. Brunner said kindly, I should have seen her for what she was. Now, Let's just worry about keeping Percy and Naruto alive until. The mythology book Percy had brought hit the floor with a loud bang and Naruto's eyes widened in panic as everything went silent. Hermes smacked his head, Percy, you never give away your position. As soon as Percy grabbed the book, Naruto grabbed Percy and they ran for it. Percy saw something larger than either Grover or Mr. Brunner come out of the room, so he steered Naruto to a nearby room to hide for a bit. A few seconds later they heard a slow clop clop clop, like a muffled woodblocks, then a sound like an animal snuffling right outside the door. A large, dark shape paused in front of the glass before moving on. Chiron smiled, I take it you hid like that as well Percy. The son of the sea god just smiled, not answering. Athena spoke up next, why were you in your true form? Chiron sighed and said, would you like to try spending a whole day and night with your rump forced in a box? Both boys were sweating, that was too close. Somewhere in the hallway, Mr. Brunner spoke. Nothing, he murmured, my nerves haven't been right since the winter solstice. Neither have mine, Grover said, but I could have sworn. Go back to the dorm, Mr. Brunner told him, you've got a long day of exams tomorrow. Don't remind me, they heard Grover whine. Annabeth rolled her eyes and said, oh come on, they couldn't have been that bad. When the lights went off in Mr. Brunner's office, they bolted out of their hiding place like a bat out of hell. When they made it back to Percy's dorm, he locked the door. Okay, now we know for sure something is going on. Yeah, but what and who would want us dead? I mean, they talked as if someone was after us, Naruto pondered. Hey, can you stay here tonight? Percy asked. I mean, you're the ninja here and if anything happens we would have a better chance at surviving. Hades quick reading saved everyone from another Aphrodite squeal. Fine with me, Naruto said. Then he sighed, I just hope we survive the exams. Percy paled and hung his head, once again reminded of the exams and why they went down there in the first place. I'm so screwed. Just then, Grover walked in like nothing had happened. Hey, how are you guys doing on the studying? When they both hung their heads and didn't say anything, he got worried. You guys okay? Naruto answered. Yep, we're so screwed. 4x the next afternoon, they finally got out of their three hour Latin exam. Three hours of that madness. Naruto complained, the tests back home were never like this. Annabeth blinked at the length of the test, I stand corrected, it was bad. Ah, my eyes are swimming with all the Greek and Roman names I misspelled, Percy complained as he held his head. 
Unfortunately, Mr. Brunner called them back in. Percy, he started, don't be discouraged about leaving Yancey. It's, it's for the best. Percy interrupted Hades here, missing the twitch in Hades' eye because of all of the times he's had to stop, and said, okay, now, Chiron is about to look like he's half jackass here. Just know he was distracted and couldn't explain it well. This confused everyone, except the silently blushing centaur. He remembered this talk with Percy, it wasn't his best. He then turned to Naruto and asked, What about you? Well, I'm split between staying here for Grover's sake or going wherever Percy goes so he won't be the only new kid. Oh and don't worry, I'm used to hopping around. Mostly hopping dimensions, but you don't need to know that. While they were talking, Percy was getting annoyed by Nancy Bobofit who, like some others, was still taking the test. I see, Mr. Brunner commented, I guess this place isn't the right place for you boys then, it was only a matter of time. Naruto glanced at Percy sadly, seeing that Percy was upset. His favorite teacher at this dump of a school, in front of a whole freaking class, was telling him that he couldn't handle it here. This pissed Naruto off, Percy was his best friend in this world after all. Apollo blinked, surprised at Chiron's bluntness, wow, you can be a real censored when you're distracted. This go him a glare from Hestia, who snapped her fingers. A bar of foaming soap appeared in Apollo's mouth and began scrubbing. Artemis smirked and said, Hestia, have I told you that you were my favorite aunt? No, no, Mr. Brunner said, trying to backtrack, oh confound it all. What I'm trying to say, you're not normal Percy, nor you Naruto. But that's nothing to be. Thanks, Percy blurted out, clearly hurt, thanks a lot sir, for reminding me. Percy, he called, but Percy was already gone. Naruto looked from the door to Mr. Brunner and scowled. Way to choose your words Mr. Brunner. Naruto said this as he took off after his friend. 4x on the last day of the term, Naruto watched as Percy shoved his clothes into his suitcase. They both listened to the other boys brag about where they were going this summer. Those idiots may be juvenile delinquents, but they were also rich juvenile delinquents. One of them asked Percy and Naruto where they were going. My home in the city for the summer, Percy replied. Same here, Naruto said, scaring Percy since he had no idea when Naruto had gotten there. When did you get there? Percy asked, while the others went back to what they were doing, as if the two didn't exist since they were nobodies to them. Hey, a few minutes ago man, chuckled Naruto. Apollo and Hermes flashed into traditional black ninja clothes and quickly said, read, screamed, ninja, before flashing back to their normal clothes. Oh, replied a lightly blushing Percy. So remind me again why I'm going with you to your place for the day? Naruto asked. Well, as you can tell, I've been a bit peeved lately and you usually help out when I'm in a bad mood. So, I guess I need you to keep me in check, because Gabe is going to really piss me off. Noted, Naruto commented, and then his eyes lit up. You know, I live right in the middle. From your apartment to school, I just noticed that. Good, then you can come over more often, Percy mumbled as they left the school dorms to get on the bus, though he was wondering how Naruto got from his home to the school in time for class. Must be a ninja thing. 4x both boys were dreading how they were going to say goodbye to Grover, but luckily for them he was on the bus they were on. The whole bus ride they saw Grover fidgeting like he was expecting something to come out of nowhere and go after him or them. He was like this every time they left the school campus, odd. Unfortunately, Percy was getting annoyed by it and blurted out, looking for kindly ones. Naruto smacked his head while Grover jumped out of his seat. Grover bleated and semi-glared at Percy, give a satyr a heart attack. Percy had the decency to look embarrassed. Wah. What do you mean? A nervous Grover asked. The boys confessed to eavesdropping on his and Mr. Brunner's conversation the night before the exams. Grover's eye twitched. How much did you hear? Oh, not much. What's the summer solstice deadline? Percy asked. And is that too much for you? Naruto smirked. Hades smirked as well, enjoying his other son's humor. He winced. Look guys, I was just worried for you, see? I mean, hallucinating about demon math teachers. Grover, dude and I was telling Mr. Brunner that maybe that you guys were overstressed or something, because there wasn't anyone named Mrs. Dobbs at school, and. Dude you censored at lying, Naruto blurted out, making Grover sputter and his ears to turn pink. From his shirt pocket, he fished out a couple of grubby business cards. Just take this, okay? In case you need me this summer. 
the card was in fancy script. Athena raised an eyebrow at this, they're dyslexic. Why is it in cursive? This was asked to Dionysus, who was currently leafing through a wine magazine. He kept reading as he answered in a bored tone, I enjoy seeing them suffer through it. Chiron replied before anyone could get the wrong idea, truthfully it is both a test and something to help them learn to read English better. If they are able to read it then they might just be descendants with a semi-strong scent. Which was murder on their dyslexic eyes, but they finally made out something like. Grover Underwood Keeper Half Blood Hill Long Island, New York. 800, 009. 0009 what's half? Percy started. Don't say it out loud. Grover yelped. That's my, um, summer address. That made Naruto's eyes roll. There was something really odd going on, that was for sure. Percy was a little sad that even Grover had a summer home, like the other people at school. At least Naruto is like me and lives close. Okay, he said glumly, so, like, if I want to come visit your mansion. Annabeth lightly punched Percy, stop jumping to conclusions. He nodded, or, or if you need me. Why would I need you? Percy growled out harshly, surprising even Naruto. Seeing he looks he was getting, Percy explained. I was having a bad day, what with Chiron's failed explanation and all. I just took it out on the wrong person, sorry G-man. Grover blushed right down to his Adam's apple. Look, Percy, the truth is, I, I kind of have to protect you, both of you, he said, making the boys look at him oddly. They were the ones protecting him all year at school, so how could he protect them? Grover, Percy said, what exactly are you protecting us from? Before he could answer, there was a horrible grinding noise under their feet. Black smoke poured from the dashboard and the whole bus filled with the smell of rotten eggs. The driver cursed and limped the Greyhound bus over to the side of the highway. After a few minutes of clanking around in the engine compartment, the driver announced that they'd all have to get off. Percy, Naruto, and Grover filed outside with everyone else. They were on a stretch of country road, no place you'd notice if you didn't break down there. On their side of the highway was nothing but maple trees and litter from passing cars. On the other side, across four lanes of asphalt shimmering with the afternoon heat, was an old-fashioned fruit stand. Demeter smiled, oh, excellent, while not cereal it is very healthy. No one talked, lest they start her on another cereal rant. Talk about being in the middle of nowhere, Naruto commented while hitting the back of his head on the bus. Raising an eyebrow, he took a look at the fruit stand on the other side of the street. The stuff on sale looked really good, heaping boxes of blood-red cherries and apples, walnuts and apricots, jugs of cider in a claw-foot tub full of ice. There were no customers, just three old ladies sitting in rocking chairs in the shade of a maple tree, knitting the biggest pair of socks he'd ever seen. Who wears socks the size of sweaters? Hades' already pale complexion paled even more, along with Poseidon, Annabeth, Chiron, and Grover. Three old ladies? Knitting with yarn? The lady on the right knitted one of them, while the one on the left knitted the other. The one in the middle held an enormous basket of electric blue yarn. All three women looked ancient, with pale faces wrinkled like fruit leather, silver hair tied back in white bandanas, bony arms sticking out of bleached cotton dresses. Everyone except Percy held their breath, knowing the fates when they heard their descriptions. Hades was praying for his son's safety along with Poseidon and Annabeth was squeezing Percy's hand as tight as possible. The creepy thing was, they were staring right at Percy and Naruto. Talk about creepy, Naruto commented, hey Grover, whatever was going to ask died in his throat. They looked at Grover to see that all of the color had drained out of him, that and his nose was twitching. Tell me, are they looking at you too? They are aren't they? Yeah. Weird huh? Think those socks would fit me? asked Percy in a joking manner. Not likely, Naruto replied, getting really freaked out, I don't think they would even fit the fattest priest. Apollo and Hermes, trying to lighten the mood, gave weak chuckles at this. It did nothing to help everyone to calm down. Not funny you two. Not funny at all, Grover whined. What's eating you? Naruto asked. Grover only pointed to the old ladies. The old lady in the middle took out a huge pair of scissors, gold and silver, long bladed, like shears. They heard Grover gasp. Everyone else gasped as well, with the parents of the two boys began sweating in fear. Though Hades covered it up better than Poseidon. We're getting back on the bus, he told them, come one. What? Percy said, it's like a thousand degrees in there. 
Do you actually like the heat grover? Naruto asked, complained. Come on. He pried open the door and climbed inside, while the duo stayed back for a bit. Across the road, the old ladies were still watching them. The middle one cut the yarn, which echoed across all four lanes of traffic. Poseidon quickly looked towards Percy, reassuring himself that he was still there. Annabeth, meanwhile, was squeezing Percy's hand so hard it turned white. He calmly whispered, It's all right, wise girl, the cord wasn't mine. Seeing her shocked look, he smiled sadly and said, It was for the hero. She understood immediately and her eyes watered slightly. Slowly and stealthily, she moved closer to Percy and snuggled up to him. They took comfort in each other as Hades slowly began again. Her two friends balled up the electric blue socks, the boys still wondered who they could possibly be for, maybe Bigfoot or the man in the moon. Naruto rolled his eyes and climbed into the bus. Come on, let's go calm Grover down before he pisses himself. At the rear of the bus, the driver wrenched a big chunk of smoking metal out of the engine compartment. The bus shuddered a few times, the engine roared back to life and everyone cheered. Darn right, yelled the driver. He slapped the bus with his hat and yelled, everybody back on board. Oh just in time, Naruto drawled as he walked to the back with Percy. Once the bus got going, Percy began to feel feverish, like he had the flu, and Naruto started sweating and complaining about the heat. Grover wasn't any better, but he was chattering his teeth like he was cold. Grover? asked Percy. Yeah? What aren't you telling us? Grover dabbed his forehead with his shirt sleeve. Percy, what did you two see back there? A few old ladies with way too much time on their hands, Naruto replied while putting a hand on his forehead and wiping off the sweat. Everyone weakly chuckled at this, feeling the mood slowly go back to normal. At this time, Athena noticed the close proximity between her daughter and Percy. Her eyes narrowed as she tried to think of a different reason for their closeness then, no, it had to be something different. Yeah, Percy smirked, but lost it when Grover's face got serious. Wait, they're not like Miss Dodds are they? The look he gave them made it seem worse. What could be worse? Just tell me what you saw. The middle one took out her scissors and she cut the yarn, Percy shrugged, like it was nothing. Grover closed his eyes and made a gesture with his fingers that might have been crossing himself, but it wasn't. It was something else, something, older. Now that was odd. He said, you saw her snip the cord. Yeah. So? Percy replied, getting the feeling that it was something big. This is not happening, Grover mumbled. He started chewing at his thumb, I don't want this to be like last time. What last time? The boys asked, getting freaked out as much as Grover was now always sixth grade, they never get past sixth, Grover mumbled to himself again. Grover, Percy said, because he was really starting to get scared. What are you talking about? Let me walk you two home from the bus station. Promise me. This seemed like a strange request, but they promised he could. It's no problem, I'm going over to his place anyways, Naruto replied. Uh, is this like a superstition or something? Percy asked, but got no answer. Grover, that snipping of the yarn, does it mean somebody is going to die? Annabeth sadly chuckled, of course you remember that part of Greek mythology seaweed brain. Percy just smiled and gently squeezed her. He looked at the two of them mournfully, like he was already picking the kind of flowers that would be best on their coffins. That was when the cogs in Naruto's mind started churning, rapidly. The things that had been happening lately in all the Greek mythology they had been learning finally caught up to him. Those three crones were something he paled at, oh crap. What? Percy said, freaked out that Naruto was scared now. Neji was right, fate, or in this case fates, do exist, Naruto replied, while Percy and Grover gawked at him. Hades closed the book, saving their place for the next reading. He sighed and said the first thing that came to his mind, troublesome. 4x in another dimension, a certain pineapple-haired boy sneezed, said troublesome, and went back to snoozing. Hades held the book up and began saying, who is nay before being interrupted by Hermes, who snatched the book from his hands in the blink of an eye. Hades glared at the smiling thief, who just ignored him entirely. All right. My turn to read about the awesome ninja boy. Hermes declared, settling into his seat and clearing his throat before saying, Gabe is pwned, Grover has what? The rest of bus ride they listened to Grover freak out to himself the whole way. So it was not a surprise that when it was over that Grover had to go to the can. 
The embarrassed satyr turned an interesting shade of pink as everyone laughed. Even the everkind Chiron was chuckling at the goat boy's bad luck. You see, when Grover get upset, his bladder act up. So when Grover went to the bathroom at the bus station, the boys quickly got away. Percy hailed a cab and they jumped in. Grover turned to glare at a nervous Percy, blah a a a. Give a guy a heart attack much. Percy shrugged, sorry? Seeing his friend still glaring he said, treat you to all you can eat enchiladas? Grover smirked and said, it's a start. Ares quietly applauded the goat's negotiation skills, give me what I want or suffer. Works every time. East 104th and 1st, Percy told the driver. Meanwhile Naruto made the shadow clone hand sign, causing Percy to look at him oddly when nothing happened. Everyone else was confused as well. Talia asked, what was that about? This got a chuckle from Hermes who read, uh, what was that about? Talia glared at everyone who snickered, that being Percy, Nico, and Annabeth. Keep. Reading, she ground out to Hermes. Said God smirked before carrying on. As the yellow cab drove them away from the bus station Naruto replied, I made one outside. You know Grover will freak out as he had been about not being able to protect you. Besides, I think it is time he knows what I can do. Grover groaned, no I don't. The more powerful you seem the more you pain in the rumps worry me. Said, pains in the rumps, all just chuckled, with Annabeth patting the poor goat's back. Percy gave Naruto a small smile and said, you know you are going to give him a heart attack. Naruto gave Percy a smirk as they traveled to his mom's apartment. Along the way, Percy began telling Naruto all about his mom. My mom's name is Sally Jackson and she is the best person in the world. That also proves my theory that the best people have the rottenest luck, Percy said. Naruto nodded having heard that from him a few weeks ago. Percy nodded, it's true. My mom had a crappy life until recently, Annabeth had a bad childhood that's getting much better, and most demigod lives just censored period. His friends all began nodding along, with Annabeth having a barely noticeable blush at being called, great, by her currently secret boyfriend. 4x Grover got out of the bathroom and looked around for Percy and Naruto. He only saw Naruto with his arms crossed. Hey Naruto, where is Percy? He asked, confused. Apollo chuckled loudly, ah you poor goat. You got your work cut out for you here. Grover softly grumbled to himself while mock glaring at Percy, you have no idea Lord Apollo. He went home, Naruto, replied, making Grover's eyes widen, don't worry though, I am with him. What? How can that be possible, you're right here, Grover freaked. Poseidon laughed and looked at Dionysus, boy, you might be out of a job if Hades' son keeps messing with people this way. Said wine god just looked up from his wine magazine and asked, hum, you say something? Poseidon, for some reason he'd never know, had to repress the urge to say curse your hip attitude, and something about springtime youth. Grover, Mr. Brunner was right. Percy is not normal and, in a sense, neither am I, Naruto, explained, making Grover sweat under the blonde's gaze. Weird shit has been going on lately and it has been going on most of Percy's life. I, on the other hand, I think that stuff is a bit normal, the thing with people trying to kill you. Hades' mouth narrowed, not knowing how to feel. On one hand, the boy who could have been his son was strong and resourceful, on the other he apparently was a danger magnet. He sighed quietly and muttered, I'm too old for this, and my hair's starting to gray already. Naruto, then looked around them to see that the bus station was completely empty, everyone having left a while ago. I know I am not normal because I have powers that normal humans don't have, remember that Grover because that helped me protect Percy like you want, Naruto said. Naruto's form then faltered a bit before it went up in a hail of shadows, the pieces flying into the nearby shadows. Grover had a look of pure shock on his face. No way. Apollo made a loud boom sound and said, boom, mind, blown. Artemis sighed, smacked her brother in the back of his head, and motioned for Hermes to read. 4x the demigod duo made it to Percy's apartment and paid the cab. Percy looked up at the apartment nervously and said, Naruto, are you sure want to come in? Smelly Gabe is a real jerk and he won't be any different to you. Hades made a mental note to reserve an extra harsh punishment for this, Smelly Gabe. Naruto smile with a bit of annoyance. Yes Percy, I want to come in. You told me about your mom, and all her history, and I still can't figure why she is with this Gabe. Don't worry, I won't anger him, much. 
Hermes chuckled to himself and thought, my prank senses are tingling. This should be good. I am getting a bad feeling about this, Percy said as they entered the building, hoping his mom would be home from work. Instead Smelly Gabe was in the living room, playing poker with his buddies. The television blared ESPN, chips and beer cans were strewn all over the carpet. A majority of the people reading showed their disgust. Aphrodite actually appeared close to throwing up, he usually flawless skin turning slightly green. Wow. This is worse than I expected, Naruto thought with a deadpan expression. Hardly looking up, Gabe spoke around his cigar, so, you're home, who is your loser friend? Naruto. Where's my mom? Percy replied shortly. Working, he said. You got any cash? That made Percy roll his eyes. What no welcome back? Good to see you. How has your life been the last six months? Figures. Poseidon frowned and said, I'm beginning to understand why you dislike this man so much Percy. Several of the other gods nodded as well, having their own frowns on their faces. Percy noticed that Gabe had put on weight. He looked like a tuskless walrus in thrift store clothes. He had about three hairs on his head, all combed over his bald scalp, as if that made him handsome or something. Aphrodite couldn't stand it anymore. Snapping her fingers a trash can appeared in her hands, which she immediately began throwing up in. Several of the other women present looked to be not that far behind her. This guy managed the electronics megamart in Queens, but he stayed home most of the time. It was a wonder why he hadn't been fired long before. He just kept on collecting paychecks, spending the money on cigars that made Percy nauseous, and on beer, of course. Always beer. Whenever Percy was home, he expected him to provide his gambling funds. He called that their guy's secret. Meaning, if he told his mom, he would punch his lights out. Of course Naruto knew as he had told him along the way. Naruto was not happy about that. Neither was the boy's father, if the small shaking of the ground was any indication. Hades secretly added Gabe to his mortals to have killed list. I don't have any cash, Naruto heard Percy tell him, which made the man raise a greasy eyebrow. Percy had told Naruto that the man could smell money but not much else, which was very odd. You took a taxi from the bus station, he said, probably paid with a twenty. Got six, seven bucks in change. Somebody expects to live under this roof, he ought to carry his own weight. Am I right, Eddie? Hestia frowned. What a disgusting man, to extort his family like this. She smiled sadly at Percy, I'm sorry you had to live with him nephew. Percy just smiled at her, it's all right Aunt Hestia. Could say our, rocky, relationship was, I, opening. Those who knew the fat man's fate stifled their laughs, while everyone else just looked confused. Eddie, the super of the apartment building, looked at Percy with a twinge of sympathy. Come on, Gabe, he said. The kid just got here. Am I right? Gabe repeated. Eddie scowled into his bowl of pretzels. The other two guys, Naruto noticed, passed gas in harmony. Aphrodite ralphed into her bucket again, forcing Ares to move away due to the smell. Hephaestus, meanwhile, moved closer and began rubbing her back gently. He loved his wife, no matter how much she didn't feel the same. Fine, Percy said. He dug a wad of dollars out of his pocket and threw the money on the table. I hope you lose. Before anything could be said or done, Naruto put a hand on Percy's shoulder and the money. Percy looked at Naruto oddly before he noticed the gleam in Naruto's eye. Oh, Gabe was so screwed. How about I play? You can take my money if I lose, Naruto said. Hermes and Dionysus perked up at this. Gambling? Now there was something they could get into. Percy's smirk, he knew from experience, and a lot of others at school did too, that Naruto never lost at card games, and he didn't even know how to play some of them. The gods all thought the same thing, did he get Nike's full blessing? What? A brat like you? Gabe said, eyeing Naruto. Afraid of being beat by a kid? Naruto smirked. Besides, I got a hundred dollars, are you going to pass up on that? That got Gabe's attention. Even though he was mad, Naruto did have money. He would win it from this brat and rub it in his face. Fine, sit down and play. Good. Naruto sat down and leaned over to Percy. This will be over soon. You should get settled in, it is your place after all. Hestia, Demeter, Hera, and surprisingly Artemis all thought, such a nice boy. Artemis proceeded to mentally slap herself afterwards and physically slap Apollo since he must have done something to her. As the game began, Percy nodded and left. 
He hoped Gabe would lose everything to Naruto. He slammed the door to his room, which really wasn't his room. During school months, it was Gabe's study. The man didn't study anything in there except old car magazines, but Gabe loved shoving Percy's stuff in the closet, leaving his muddy boots on my windowsill, and doing his best to make the place smell like his nasty cologne and cigars and stale beer. Poseidon had to take several deep breaths in order to control his anger. In his mind he decided that if Gabe ever set foot in the ocean the sharks would have a new chew toy. Percy dropped his suitcase on the bed. Home sweet home. Oh joy. As he thought about other stuff, he didn't know how much time had passed. He walked to his door in time to hear two things. Gabe's crying, which he knew from experience that it was the cry of a loser, and his mom calling him. It seemed that she was home now. I think this day just got better, Percy thought happily. Hera huffed. Why can none of you be that happy to see me? The gods who had not been born to her looked at her incredulously, and Hephaestus huffed as he said, because, unlike Sally, you are a horrible mother. He ignored her fierce glare, focusing instead on his newest tinker project. She opened the door and looked at Percy with a smile on her face. Oh, Percy, she said as she hugged him tightly, I can't believe it. You've grown so much since Christmas. Thanks mom, Percy said. Her red white and blue sweet on America uniform smelled like the best things in the world. Chocolate, licorice, and all the other stuff she sold at the candy shop in Grand Central. She'd brought him a huge bag of free samples, the way she always did when he came home. Hermes and Apollo hummed in disappointment, starting to get hungry. You are one lucky kid, Percy. Free candy. Awesome. Apollo said, pouting a little as he spoke. So who is your friend out there beating everyone at poker? Oh. That's Naruto Uzumaki. He is a good friend from school, Percy replied. Good to know you have a friend. Sally Jackson said softly as she hugged him again. Percy then began to tell her all about his school year at Yancey Academy. It seriously was not as bad as the headmaster said it was. He didn't really tell her much about the museum because it still freaked him out, but she seemed to already know because she asked, Did something scare you? Perceptive and smart. How did you trick her into having a child with you, Barnacle Beard? Athena asked smugly, enjoying Poseidon's obvious anger. Everyone just ignored their bickering, having gotten used to it a long time ago. No mom, Percy lied. But whatever happened seemed to revolve around both me and Naruto, he said making her eyes widen. So, Percy found a friend like himself. That's good, if he ever got to that world he would really need a friend. Mrs. Jackson thought to herself. From the other room, Gabe yelled, Hey, Sally. How about some bean dip, huh? Percy snorted and mumbled, lazy asshole. Figures, even if he is beaten, he is still a jerk. Percy thought while grinding his teeth. Oh never mind. Your brat of a friend got it for us, came Gabe's voice again. Percy gave a weak smile when he heard that. I so owe you for this Naruto. I have a surprise for you, Sally said. We're going to the beach. Percy's eyes widened. Montauk? Three nights, same cabin. Poseidon smiled sadly, remembering the days he spent there with Sally. If only she had accepted my offer to join me in my kingdom, she'd have never had to put up with this mortal. When? She smiled, as soon as I get changed. He couldn't believe it. They hadn't been to Montauk the last two summers, because Gabe said there wasn't enough money. He then looked at her hopeful and said, Can Naruto come too? He can pay I am sure after the beating he gave Gabe. She laughed and nodded her head. I don't see the problem with that. Percy smiled as he said, I'd be nice to have a friend there with us. Annabeth smiled at Percy, enjoying seeing him so relaxed. Glancing around to make sure no one was looking, she moved closer and snuggled into his side more. He just smiled and held her loosely. With that they left his room and walked out to see a steaming Gabe and a smirking Naruto. Gabe's friends were looking at Naruto like he was the poker god. Gabe looked at them and regained his composure and said, you were in there a long time. Oh we were just talking about the trip, Sally said happily. Gabe's eyes got small. The trip? You mean you were serious about that? I knew it, Percy muttered. He won't let us go. Poseidon growled, like he has a choice. I'd gut him if he tried to stop you from going. Of course he will, his mom said evenly. Your stepfather is just worried about money. That's all. Besides, she added, Gabriel won't have to settle for bean dip. I'll make him enough seven-layer dip for the whole weekend. Guacamole. Sour cream. The works. Gabe softened a bit. So this money for your trip, 
it comes out of your clothes budget, right, because I lost most of mine to this brat. The fat man said while jutting his pudgy finger at Naruto, who had an innocent look on his face. The gods snorted at this. The son of Hades. Innocent? That's as likely as Medusa, Arachne and Athena having lunch together. Aphrodite, though, looked dead when she heard this. Close budget. Oh. Someone hold me back, I'll show that disgusting son of A. Her rant continued for a few minutes. During this time Hades was taking notes on the various tortures she thought up. Yes, honey, Sally said, and you won't take my car anywhere but there and back. We'll be very careful. Gabe scratched his double chin. Maybe if you hurry with that seven layer dip, and maybe if the kid apologizes for interrupting my poker game. Maybe if I kick you in your soft spot, Percy thought, and make you sing soprano for a week. The entire hall burst into laughter at the thought, the majority hoping Percy would do it. He looked to his mom and it was a silent agreement that he had to be nice to Gabe if this was going to work. I'm sorry, Percy muttered. I'm really sorry I interrupted your incredibly important poker game. Please go back to it right now. Gabe narrowed his eyes, trying to detect sarcasm in what Percy said. Yeah, whatever. He then turned to Naruto. No more for you. Go away. Naruto just shrugged and walked over to Percy and his mom. Oh, Naruto, would you like to come with us? She asked. Uh, sure. Are you sure you want someone like me on board? Yes, you are Percy's friend after all, so you must be a good kid, Sally replied, making Gabe roll his eyes. Okay then. I hope you don't mind me paying for my stuff since I now have quite a bit of money, Naruto said pocketing his money, which was about $500. Hermes whistled, doing the math in his head, man, that's a quite an increase. If he wasn't Hades' kid I'd swear Nike had him. Everyone nodded in agreement, agreeing completely. He smirked with he heard Gabe complain about having to pay for Naruto's trip. Thank you. Sally said with a smile because she heard it too. Once we get to Montauk, we'll talk more about whatever you've forgotten to tell me, okay? She said to Percy. Naruto just knew that he told his mom about a little of what happened. Oh, Naruto, do we need to go to your place for you to pack? Before Gabe could complain, Naruto replied, Nah. I got my stuff with me. Since I hung out at Percy's dorm at lot, I hardly ever went home to my apartment, which is the halfway point from here to school. Oh. Okay then Mrs. Jackson said, thinking that Naruto probably left his stuff somewhere near here. She then gave Percy a smile and went to make the dip for the fat dip. Everyone chuckled at this, still finding insulting the pig of a man fun. An hour later, they were all ready to go. Naruto had a backpack on now and Sally wondered where it had come from. Percy just smiled, if only you knew mom. Gabe watched as Naruto and Percy put all the bags in the car. The ugly man groaned about losing his wife's cooking and then his car all weekend which, unlike him, was cool. It was a, 78 Camaro. Not a scratch on this car, brain boy, poker brat, he warned them as they loaded the last bag. Not one little scratch. Percy smirked as he said, oops, which go a chuckle from the demigods who knew what happened to the car. Naruto just gave him a saluted as the fat man lumbered back in the apartment. He knew that Gabe really pissed Percy off and he now understood why. He was getting pissed at this guy as well. He then saw Percy make that odd gesture that Grover did on the bus and whatever he did worked, because as soon smelly Gabe was in the doorway, the screen door slammed shut and probably sent the man flying. Most of the gods were impressed, it took a lot of power to make that sign work. Zeus, on the other hand, started worrying. He hoped this dimension's Percy wasn't that strong. The two boys quickly got in the car and Percy told his mom to step on it as they didn't want to feel Gabe's wrath. After a bit, Naruto could not help but laugh at what he was happened. Though, that weird gesture Percy used had energy similar to Chakra. Odd. This concerned the gods. Chakra was similar to godly power. Just how powerful was this kid? Covertly, Hades was proud of his son. 4x once they got there, Naruto smiled as he loved places like this. They set their stuff in the cabin that they got and messed around until it was dark out. They were currently sitting around a small fire, roasting hot dogs and marshmallows. Mom. What was my father like? Percy asked with some courage. Poseidon focused on the story even more now, he wanted to see just what Sally thought of him. Unnoticed to everyone, Athena also listened closely. Know your enemy, she thought to herself. Let's see just how much of an ass Poseidon acts like with his affairs. He was kind, 
Percy, she said. Tall, handsome, and powerful. But gentle, too. You have his black hair, you know, and his green eyes. She fished a blue jelly bean out of her candy bag. I wish he could see you, Percy. He would be so proud. Athena frowned at this, it had to be a mistake. The king of stupid fish being nice to his affairs. Impossible. Percy looked a little sad at that. Naruto thought that the kid was thinking about how his father would be proud of him with all that happened. How old was I? Percy asked. I mean, when he left. She watched the flames. He was only with me for one summer, Percy. Right here at this beach. This cabin. But, he knew me as a baby. No, honey. He knew I was expecting a baby, but he never saw you. He had to leave before you were born. She said and then looked to Naruto, who had been silent for the conversation. Naruto. What are your parents like? The gods flinched at this, Hades especially. His mortal mother dead and godly father forced to leave? With a powerful being sealed into him and every adult knowing it? It wouldn't be a nice life for anyone. Naruto chuckled a bit, but it was hollow. I am an orphan. I never really knew my parents. But I was given some stuff of my father's. He had a journal that described my mom to be a fiery and tomboyish redhead. She loved pranks as much as I do and she was also a very caring person. I was told she died in childbirth. Now I heard that my dad was the best fighter around and an all-around nice guy. Hades smiled smugly at this. Best fighter. Definitely true. Though if what I read is right, my mom wore the pants in that relationship. That made Percy chuckle a bit and his mom had a big smile on her face. Hades' smug smile disappeared faster than an all-you-can-eat buffet around a fat guy convention. I can make this joke. I am overweight so no flaming about fat discrimination. The females in the room smirked at this, feeling smug that the woman wore the pants as it obviously should be. Poseidon and Zeus just stared smugly at Hades for a minute before turning towards a bored expression. Gloating to their brother was not worth the ire of every female in the room. I am sorry about that, Sally said. Who was taking care of you? Don't be. My grandfather was taking care of my before he died. No one said it, but it was obvious whose father it must have been. Kronos being kind. Hell no. Naruto said, not wanting to tell them that he was killed, but I have been doing pretty well on my own anyway. Then Percy had a sad look. He didn't know if his mom even wanted him around. He didn't think he could handle being alone like Naruto. Are you going to send me away again? Percy asked her. To another boarding school? She pulled a marshmallow from the fire. I don't know, honey, her voice was heavy. I think, I think we'll have to do something. Because you don't want me around? He regretted the words as soon as they were out. Percy smacked his head and said, I was a real idiot when I was younger. Nico and Talia smirked and, in unison, said, You're still an idiot. Percy pouted and hugged Annabeth closer, mumbling about mean cousins all the while. Her eyes welled with tears. She took his hand, squeezed it tight. Oh, Percy, no I. I have to, honey. For your own good. I have to send you away. This made Naruto quirk an eyebrow. Okay. The way she is saying this means she knows something like Grover and Mr. Brunner. Because I'm not normal, Percy suddenly said. Normal is overrated anyway, Percy said dismissively. You say that as if it's a bad thing, Percy. But you don't realize how important you are. I thought Yancey Academy would be far enough away. I thought you'd finally be safe. Safe from what? Percy asked though when he locked eyes with her, all the memories of weird shit happening to him had surfaced. Before anything else was said, Naruto cut in. Percy, not being normal is not that bad. I mean look at me. I have, this powers and I am fine. Poseidon smirked. Well, if Sally didn't know Naruto was a half-blood before she will now. Percy nodded knowing his mom was very good at figuring these things out. Mrs. Jackson looked at him oddly and he sighed knowing that he would have to show her. He held out his hand and swirling ball of energy formed in his hand. Athena sighed, this demigod is much stronger than normal, and this is true. But, just how much damage can this attack do? Once more an iris message popped into existence. It showed Naruto creating the Rasengan and hitting Kabuto with it, along with the damage to the giant boulder behind the snake's boy toy. Apollo whistled as he watched the scene, damn. Majority of the ribs broken, spiraled skin rips, and the gray-haired guy's spinal cord is almost snapped in half. Everyone was awed by the power shown by the blonde. 
Ares had to resist pouting about being unable to fight the kid himself. Percy's eyes widened and said, You never showed that one to me, only those shadow clones. Shadow? Could he be just like Percy, a son of the big three? Sally thought as she eyed the ball before it dissipated. She gave Naruto a grateful look and continued on. I've tried to keep you as close to me as I could, she said to Percy. They told me it was a mistake. But there's only one other option, Percy. The place your father wanted to send you. And, I just, I just can't stand to do it. My father wanted me to go to a special school. Not a school, she said softly, a summer camp and apparently it is a place you both need to go to. Both boys just looked at her oddly. Naruto never heard anything about a camp in the letter he got from his dad. Of course not. It's a test to get there yourself, Hades said, his voice showing slight pride for the son he didn't really have. I'm sorry, Percy, she said, seeing the look in his eyes, but I can't talk about it. I, I couldn't send you to that place. It might mean saying goodbye to you for good. For good? But if it's only a summer camp, Percy trialed off as he saw the tears in his mom's eyes. 4x it was storming out but both boys were sound asleep, dreaming the exact same dream. It was storming on the beach, and three beautiful animals, a white horse, a golden eagle, and pitch black raven were trying to kill each other at the edge of the surf. Every one of the gods was worried now. All three brothers fighting? What the heck was going on? Well the raven was not doing much. It just hovered in midair, watching the two fight and only with a mild look of interest. Everyone except Hades, Poseidon, and Zeus deadpanned. Yeah. That's about how all of their fights go, they thought at the same time. Of course it would attack at certain times. The eagle swooped down and slashed the horse's muzzle with its huge talons. The horse reared up and kicked at the eagle's wings. The raven then decided to claw at the eagle a bit before doing the same to the horse. As they fought, the ground rumbled, and a monstrous voice chuckled somewhere beneath the earth, goading the animals to fight harder. The gods were even more worried now. If Hades was fighting as the raven, then who was goading them on? Percy and Naruto ran toward them, knowing they had to stop them from killing each other, but the problem was that they were running in slow motion. They knew they would be too late. They saw the eagle dive down, its beak aimed at the horse's wide eyes, while the raven decided to help out its flying companion. The two boys had enough and screamed, no. Thankfully it was just a dream and they woke up with a start like it was a nightmare. Outside, it really was storming. The kind of storm that cracks trees and blows down houses. There was no horse, eagle, or raven on the beach, just lightning making false daylight, and twenty-foot waves pounding the dunes like artillery. Though everyone once in a while they saw that the lightning was covered in black fire or sometimes they also saw steaming hot water fly up into the sky, but it was a sickly black color. This shit never happened. The big three blinked, their fights never being quite that bad. Hades and Zeus seemed to be teaming up against Poseidon, that never happened. With the next thunderclap, Percy's mom awoke. She sat up, eyes wide, and said, Hurricane. Percy knew that was crazy. Long Island never sees hurricanes this early in the summer. But the ocean seemed to have forgotten. Over the roar of the wind, he heard a distant bellow, an angry, tortured sound that made his hair stand on end. Then a much closer noise, like mallets in the sand. A desperate voice, someone yelling, pounding on our cabin door. Mrs. Jackson sprang out of bed in her nightgown and threw open the lock. Grover stood framed in the doorway against a backdrop of pouring rain. But he wasn't, he wasn't exactly Grover. Apollo looked confused. What? What happened to Goat Boy? Said Goat Boy frowned and grumbled as his friends laughed at his new nickname. Artemis just smacked Apollo in the back of the head, not uttering a single word about his stupid question. Searching all night, he gasped. What were you two thinking? Mrs. Jackson looked at them in terror, not scared of Grover, but of why he'd come. They boy were too shocked at the moment to register that however. Because, instead of normal legs, Grover had legs that were like an animal's, sort of like a donkey or maybe a goat. Blah a a Why does everyone think their donkey lags? Grover cried out in frustration, holding his head in despair. Percy patted his back empathically used to this reaction by now. Percy, she said, shouting to be heard over the rain. What happened at school? What didn't you tell me? Oh Zukai Aloy Theoi, Grover yelled. It's right behind me, didn't you tell her? You mean the kindly one you blabbed about are the old crones who are the fates? 
Naruto shouted above the noise, making Percy's mom widen her eyes in horror. She grabbed her purse, tossed Percy and Naruto a rain jacket, and said, Get to the car. All of you. Go. Grover ran for the Camaro, but he wasn't running, exactly. He was trotting, shaking his shaggy hindquarters, and suddenly his story about a muscular disorder in his legs made sense to me. That would explain how he could run so fast and still limp when he walked. Yep, we have entered the Twilight Zone. Naruto mumbled. But what is coming after us? He never got an answer because Grover quickly got in the car, not hearing him. He sighed and got in, going with the flow. Hermes closed the book and said, Well, the excitement's finally picking up. He shrugged and helped up the book. So who wants to read next? Before anyone could say a thing, another bright flash shined throughout the room, blinding everyone. As the light began to fade those who had been reading were shocked to hear someone very familiar shouting, What the dollar percent and asterisk is going on here? Blinking away the temporary blindness, everyone was able to see three new figures had appeared. The one who had shouted was a big, tall girl with short, stringy light brown hair, piggish brown eyes and a strong-looking build. This was Clarice LaRue, daughter of Ares, counselor of Cabin 5, and Dracon Slayer. And she was angry. The other two were hidden by black cloaks with red clouds decorating them and straw hats on their heads. One was about a head shorter than the other hinting to the fact that one was an adult and the other a teenager. It was hard to tell what their gender was since their cloaks covered everything, but no one was focused on that right now. No, right now, everyone was looking at the rage-filled daughter of Ares. She had finally gotten a good look around and realized where she was. As she calmed down enough she finally noticed a certain daughter of Aphrodite. She gaped and slowly, shakily said, S. Selena? The daughter of Aphrodite smiled, tears in her eyes as she nodded, in a flash to fast to see, the daughters of love and war were hugging each other tightly. Selena was quietly saying, sorry, over and over again, with Clarice just hugging her like a lifeline. The demigods smiled at this scene, knowing that the two best friends were finally reunited. The gods, while confused, just smiled at the heartwarming scene. After allowing them a few more moments Zeus cleared his throat. Clarice pulled back slowly, taking a calming breath and bowing to the king of the gods. My lord, she said, then bowed to her father, father. If I may be so bold, what the Hades is going on here? After everything was explained to her, they all turned to the patiently waiting mystery guests. Now then, who are you two? Zeus asked. The shorter one bowed and replied by removing their hat. Everyone was stunned to find another Clarice staring at them with a smile, smirk. You all can guess my name thanks to my beautiful twin over there, but for now just call me Rue to avoid confusion. Shaking off the shock, they turned to the taller figure. In a show of flashiness, the cloak and hat were thrown high into the air. The woman, for it could never be anything else. This beautiful woman had a slender, but feminine build, fair skin, deep violet eyes that seemed to constantly change shades, and fiery red hair. She was wearing a high-collared, sleeveless blouse under a long, loose-fitting dress. Despite the modest clothing, the gods could not help but think her to be beyond beautiful. Kanichiwa. I'm Kashina Uzumaki, mother of Naruto Uzumaki, second wife of Hades and daughter of Aphrodite, she called out happily, a giant smile on her face. Her introduction shocked everyone, except Ru. Naruto's mother? Aphrodite's daughter? Hades' second wife? Before anyone could begin questioning her, Ru spoke up. I'm sure everyone has some questions, everyone nodded quickly, but how about we read one more chapter and then everything can be explained during a break for lunch. Zeus, wanting to get some answers and wanting to read the book, nodded and said, so be it. He snapped his fingers, making the book appear in Rue's hands, read quickly now. Rue nodded and cleared her throat before she began, Chapter 5, That Bull is on Steroids. The group tore through the night along dark country roads. Wind slammed against the Camaro, rain lashing at the windshield. Nice way to set a scene, Apollo commented being the god of arts gave him a professional mind on things like this. Percy looked at the sun god and, in a slightly irritated voice, said, Apollo, shut up. The gods were shocked that this demigod had the nerve to speak to a god like that. The demigods, who knew what would happen, just looked at Percy sadly. Annabeth squeezed his hand gently, causing him to calm down a little. Rue, please keep reading, Percy asked. She nodded and continued. The boys honestly didn't know how Percy's mom could see anything, but she kept her foot on the gas. 
Naruto looked at Grover oddly when the lightning flashed, letting him see his friend's goat legs. He sighed, already knowing what he was and knew that Grover was on their side, hopefully. Aphrodite, who had been looking at Kashina ever since she announced her parentage, suddenly had an epiphany. Oh yes. She squealed, making every head snap to her in surprise as she smiled, I just realized. Naruto's my grandson, she squealed again, jumping up and down in excitement. Hades, who had come to the same conclusion, paled as he realized he was related to the walking squeak toy known as Aphrodite. He stubbornly refused to look at his snickering brothers. Kashina sighed, Mother, Aphrodite stopped and looked at Kashina, still smiling like a loon, please calm down. Don't you want to hear about your grandson's love life? She said this with a smirk as her mother was immediately in her seat and begging Rue to read. So, you and my mom, know each other? Percy asked, not able to stay silent. Grover's eyes flitted to the rearview mirror, though there were no cars behind them. Not exactly, he said. I mean, we've never met in person, but she knew I was watching you. Watching me? Apollo shivered, and now the goat is a stalker. You better be careful, Percy. Artemis just sighed and smacked her brother once again. Privately she thought, I've been doing that a lot lately. Keeping tabs on you. Making sure you were okay. But I wasn't faking being your friend, he added hastily. I am your friend. Um. What are you, exactly? Percy asked. That doesn't matter right now. It doesn't matter. From the waist down, my best friend is a donkey. Dionysus looked over his magazine at Percy and said, Really Pedro? Most satyrs would trample you for that. The demigods all frowned at his words, he was still messing up their names? Grover let out a sharp, throaty blah ha ha. Naruto could tell that Grover a bit ticked but he guffawed, that was really funny to him. Goat. Grover cried. What? Once getting himself under control, Naruto helped the poor guy out. Percy, he is a satyr, a being that is half human and half goat. At least Nathan understands. Dionysus drawled out, still messing up the demigods' names. Huh? But, you would mean Mr. Brunner's myths? You paid attention to that? Naruto smirked. Let's throw a party. Percy just glared at him. Clarice and Rue snickered, with the former saying, Cool off Prissy, it's just a joke. Percy just rolled his eyes, quiet war princess, like you don't get mad over little things. Like the time a boy looked at you for more than two seconds without fear? The other campers, who had seen what she did to the poor child of Apollo, snickered at her red face. Okay. Okay. Anyway, with the way Grover reacted, I am assuming that other satyr would trample you for that donkey remark. I thought it didn't matter, Percy shot back while Grover bleated again. Obviously it does, Naruto replied with a smirk. Wait, so all that Mr. Brunner taught us was actually preparing us for this stuff? Pretty much, Grover said. Great, Naruto replied sarcastically. Just what we need. Freaky monsters coming after us. The demigods all nodded. Monsters were a pain in the ass, especially for first timers in their world. Not only that, but those three old ladies were the fates and not myths and neither was Mrs. Dodds, Grover told them. So you admit there was a Mrs. Dodds, Percy exclaimed. Annabeth sighed, not important seaweed brain. Percy shrugged, give me a break. I just found out my best friend was a mythological goat man. I was grabbing at anything normal-ish. Annabeth had to give him that. Of course. Okay, so what was the point of hiding the fact that she was real? Naruto asked. The less you knew, the fewer monsters you'd attract, Grover said, like that should be perfectly obvious. We put mist over the human's eyes. We hoped you'd think the kindly one was a hallucination, but it was no good. You both started to realize who you are. Who I? Wait a minute, what do you mean? Percy asked. Yeah, you lost me as well, Naruto deadpanned. Not looking up from his magazine, Dionysus said, Grover. When we finally stop this I will be talking to you about proper explanation. Grover just gulped, his eyes dilated a little in fear of what that might mean. His friends just snickered, knowing his overactive imagination was getting the better of him. The weird bellowing noise rose up again somewhere behind us, closer than before. Whatever was chasing them was still on our trail. Percy, Percy's mom said, there's too much to explain and not enough time. We have to get you two to safety. Safety from what? Who's after us? Percy asked while Naruto raised an eyebrow. Oh, nobody much, Grover said, 
obviously still miffed about the donkey comment. Just the Lord of the Dead and a few of his bloodthirstiest minions. Grover. Annabeth yelled, giving him a light glare, are you trying to scare them? Grover shifted a little, mumbling something about payback and not a donkey. Rue just snickered as she read the nest part. Grover. Sorry, Mrs. Jackson. Could you drive faster, please? Grover replied. Annabeth nodded, good. There are worse people to sound like. What, you mean Hades? Naruto replied and the ground shook a bit and Grover nodded a little panicked. While the boys were trying to wrap their heads around all this madness, Percy's mom made a hard left. They swerved onto a narrower road, racing past darkened farmhouses and wooded hills and pick your own strawberries signs on white picket fences. Where are we going? Percy asked. The summer camp one told you about, his mother's voice was tight, she was trying for Percy's sake not to be scared. The place your father wanted to send you. Percy tensed a little, knowing that they were getting closer to the moment. He squeezed Annabeth's hand for comfort. She just smiled and squeezed his hand back. The place you didn't want me to go. Please, dear, his mother begged. This is hard enough. Try to understand. You're in danger. Because some old ladies cut yarn? Percy asked and Naruto sighed. Man, if you paid attention in class why that is bad, Naruto said. When they cut the yarn, that means someone is going to die. Percy looked at Grover, giving him a blank look. Why couldn't you explain it like that? When you told me, you made it seem like I was about to croak on the spot. Grover just gave a sheepish, accidental joke as accidental, smile and said, I was nervous, sorry. Exactly, Grover said, the fact is that they appeared in front of you too. They only do that when you're about to, when someone's about to die. Whoa you said, you, Percy freaked. No I didn't. I said, someone, Grover replied. Still not very helpful. Naruto said, yeah, you meant me, Percy said. I meant you, like, someone. Not you, you. God, I hope it is not me or you, Naruto replied. Everyone, despite the serious nature of the book's conversation, laughed at the stupidity of it. Apollo summed up everyone's thoughts, it's like a smarter version of the Three Stooges. Boys, Percy's mom said. She pulled the wheel hard to the right, and they got a glimpse of a figure she'd swerved to avoid. A dark fluttering shape now lost behind us in the storm. Another fury. Thought the fathers of both boys in slight panic. The one who controlled the monsters knew he had to attack both boys, it was the only way to keep Naruto safe from Zeus's wrath, but did he have to send the most dangerous ones? The hell was that? Naruto freaked. We're almost there, Mrs. Jackson said, ignoring Naruto's question. Another mile. Please. 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 They didn't know what there was but it had to be safe from whatever the hell was chasing them. It wasn't Mrs. Dodds that is for sure. Whatever it is, it's bigger and stronger than last time. This is reminding me of the wave mission only we are fleeing for our lives. Everyone not from that universe was confused about that. Wave mission? Luckily, Rue was able to explain. It was Naruto's first mission outside his village. His team were escorting a bridge builder back home when they were attacked by a rouge ninja named Zabuza Momochi, otherwise known as the Demon of the Bloody Mist. Ares was interested now. Bloody Mist? He'd have to talk to his daughter from the other world after this chapter. While Naruto was thinking that, Percy was thinking about the blades Mr. Brunner had thrown to them. Before he could ask Grover about that, the hair rose on the back of his neck. There was a blinding flash, a jaw rattling boom, and the car exploded. It was an odd feeling being blown up, like you were, weightless, crushed, burned, and being hosed down all at the same time. The Lord of the Seas and the King of the Dead glared at their brother, who had the decency to look a little ashamed. He could be paranoid, but wouldn't you after your father and grandfather had been killed by their children to get the throne he now held? Percy pried his forehand off the driver's seat in front of him as his mom called out to him. Ah, uh, I am fine he said. He heard Naruto mutter out a super as they noticed the car was still intact because it was in a ditch. They sighed in relief that they were not dead, not yet anyway. While Naruto was trying to regain his bearings, Percy noticed that Grover looked unconscious. Grover. Food, he groaned. Naruto's sweat dropped at that, yeah, he was going to be fine. The demigods laughed again, especially when they saw Grover's blushing face. Percy, his mother said, we have two, her voice faltered, because when the lightning flashed, 
they saw a huge figure through the mud-splashed window. Hello. Naruto said surprised. Boys, Percy's mother said, deadly serious, get out of the car. She tried the driver said but all the mud was blocking their way out. Passengers sighed. Get out now and run to the big tree. She yelled pointing to a large tree in the distance as they got out. Kashina smiled. Naruto would never abandon a friend. Those who abandon the mission are trash, but those who abandon their friends are worse than trash. She looked at Hades, a loving smile on her face, you were the one to teach him that, indirectly of course. Hades was shocked. First, one of his children doesn't turn out even a little selfish. That rarely ever happens. Second, Kashina was looking at him like Persephone usually did, with actual love and barely any lust. He had become used to being summoned by selfish women, who wanted him to make them rich. Shaking his head at that thought, he gave a small, barely noticeable smile back. She saw it and her smile widened even more. What? Percy replied, confused until the lightning flashed and a large pine tree in the distance appeared and the thing was huge. Nico smirked as he said, Percy, were you just calling Talia fat? Percy froze, slowly turning his head around to look at Talia. She was grinning much too sweetly as she polished a knife. Well? Did you Perseus? Hearing his full name used and seeing the glint in her eyes, he sat ramrod straight and refused to answer. He was not getting his manly bits chopped off. That's the property line, his mom said. Get over that hill and you'll see a big farmhouse down in the valley. Run and don't look back. Yell for help. Don't stop until you reach the door. Mom, you're coming too. Her face was pale, her eyes as sad as when she looked at the ocean. No. Percy shouted. You are coming with us. Help me carry Grover. Food. Grover moaned, a little louder. Naruto growled and yelled above the rain. Give him to me. We will get there faster that way. Percy nodded and gave Grover to Naruto and turned back to his mother to see the creature coming towards them. It was freaking huge. That and it seemed that it had fur on it. Hades gulped, nearly breaking his throne's armrests off as he realized what was sent after them. Naruto turned to look at it and yelled, Holy cow. There is nothing holy about that creature and it is not a cow. Mrs. Jackson was able to shout out. Apollo and Hermes chuckled weakly, trying and failing to ease the slowly rising tension. Naruto looked at her with a deadpanned expression that said, duh, and looked at it again and he saw horns jutting out its head. Yeah, not a cow but a bull, still it was not good. He doesn't want us, Mrs. Jackson called out. He just wants you too. Besides, I can't cross the property line. But, Percy and Naruto started to say, we don't have time. Go. Please. This just made Percy mad and he went over to his mother and helped her out all the way. We're going together. Come on, mom. Naruto just smirked at Percy's stubbornness, just like him in some aspects. Percy turned to Rue, forcing himself to actually call her that and not Clarice. Are we still friends where you're from? She nodded, yeah. He's friends with most of the camp, had to beat a few girls off of him the other day. She said the last part with a growl in her voice. This, surprisingly, caught her father's attention. He looked at Rue and narrowed his eyes behind his shades. She had to beat them off? Are they dating? Little Fishcake better hope not, until I find out if he's strong enough to protect her he isn't getting close to her. And thus, Ares inner, overprotective daddy mode, came out for the first time in thousands of years. I told you mom. I am not leaving you. Come on. They got a portion of the way but the monster was gaining on them in quick. Naruto looked at it again and his eyes widened. Holy crap, that thing looks like it is on steroids, he said, commenting on all the bulging and rippling muscles on that thing. Percy blinked owlishly, recognizing this creature from Mr. Brunner's class, that's Pacifi's son, his mother said. I wish I'd known how badly they want to kill you. But ease the in. Don't say his name, she warned. Names have power. Athena had to concede, once again, that Poseidon chose a very smart mortal to have a child with. Terrific. This really is like the wave mission. Naruto replied, getting odd looks as they ran. I'll tell y'all later. Naruto replied as they ran. He too knew what this creature was and growled. It was a big brute called the Minotaur. It may strong, but it was dumb if the books were right. The only thing that it could rely on was its sense of smell out in this weather and it was only a matter of time before it found them. As if on cue, the bull man bellowed in rage. He picked up Gabe's Camaro by the torn roof, the chassis creaking and groaning. 
He raised the car over his head and threw it down the road. It slammed into the wet asphalt and skidded in a shower of sparks for about half a mile before coming to a stop. The gas tank exploded. Oops, Percy said. Yeah, so much for not a scratch. Naruto laughed a little freaked out. That thing has Granny Tsunade's strength. Apollo thought for a second, a mortal with the Minotaur's strength? Now that's a scientific wonder. Kashina, meanwhile, was thinking a different thought. Ha 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 ha. Granny Tsunade. Oh. It never gets old hearing her called that. While inside she was dying laughing, outside her face was calm and smiling slightly. Boys, Percy's mom said, when he sees us, he'll charge. Wait until the last second, then jump out of the way, directly sideways. He can't change directions very well once he's charging. Do you understand? Oh, that's useful, Naruto said. How do you know all this? Percy asked. I've been worried about an attack for a long time. I should have expected this. I was selfish, keeping you near me, Mrs. Jackson said sadly. What's done is done. Besides, you're a mom, it is natural. Naruto replied while Percy nodded to that statement. Hearing this from what was quickly becoming the only demigod she liked, Hera thought for a moment. Her family was, well, honestly it was crap. Ares was a blood-lusting idiot most of the time and Hephaestus was a recluse with a cheating wife. She sighed as she thought, then again, that last one is mostly my fault. She discreetly glanced at her deformed son and whispered, I'm so sorry. No one could hear her though, since she was so quiet and everyone else was focusing on the book. But, there was another bellow of rage, and the bull man started tromping uphill. Great. Naruto panicked. The bull man on steroids had smelled them and was charging in fast. To Naruto, everything was happening in slow motion. He readied himself for what he had to do. Gathering some chakra to his legs and tightening his hold on Goat Boy, he patiently waited for the right moment. Twenty feet. Ten feet. Five feet. He saw Mrs. Jackson roll out of the way but it seemed Percy was waiting too long. So he used his free hat and pushed him out of harm's way and jumped him into the air, heading for the tree. The monster seemed miffed by this as it blinked in confusion until he vaguely saw Naruto land near the tree. Snorting, he faced Percy. It was sent for a purpose after all. To abduct Percy's mother and then test the master's son. Poseidon glared at Hades, a small earthquake beginning to shake the room as he spoke through gritted teeth, Hades, you had better have had a good reason for abducting Sally. Actually, Percy spoke up, surprising everyone since his body was tenser than stone, he kind of did. Still wasn't cool though, he muttered the last bit in anger. His father calmed down some and the mini quake stopped, for now. Naruto growled. He would not let his friend die. So, he laid Grover down gently near the tree and jumped back to Percy. He landed next Percy as his mom got back to him. They looked at him oddly again and he said, it is a ninja thing, come on. Then they ran for their lives to the tree. Naruto wondered why Mrs. Jackson said that she wasn't able to get to where they were going. Reaching the hill with the tree, the boys took notice that a valley was below them with a large farmhouse that had yellow lights glowing in the window. Scowling, Naruto growled. With the way things were going, they would never make it. Run, Percy. Naruto heard Mrs. Jackson call out. I can't go any farther. Run. Percy was shaking slightly, drawing Annabeth's attention to him once again. She gently squeezed his hand and whispered, It's all right. She's safe at home. Hearing her voice calmed Percy down slightly, but was still very tense. They froze in shock and fear as the Minotaur came rushing at Ms. Jackson. She tried to get out of the way like last time but it had to learn its lesson. It brought out an arm and caught her by the neck while she struggled to get away. Sally. Poseidon yelled out, fear evident in his voice. Hestia quickly went to his side, rubbing his back gently to calm him down before he did something he'd regret. Rue looked nervously at the Lord of the Sea before deciding to continue. Mom, Mrs. Jackson. The boys screamed. She caught Percy's eyes, managed to choke out one last word. Go. Then, with an angry roar, the monster closed his fists around his mother's neck, and she dissolved before their eyes, melting into light, a shimmering golden form, as if she were a holographic projection. A blinding flash and she was simply, gone. Athena, one of the very few not glaring at Hades, noticed something. Wait. She called out loud, gaining everyone's attention. The book said she vanished in a golden light, correct? Rue nodded. Yes Lady Athena. She smiled and nodded, all right. 
This means she was taken, not killed. She glanced at Poseidon, seeing a slight glimmer of hope in his eyes. She's alive you coral-headed Neanderthal, now everyone calm down and let's continue reading. Rue nodded and quickly began reading once more. No, Percy yelled. What the hell is going on? Naruto yelled, irritated about what was going on. Anger overcame Percy and the boys nodded to each other. They would have to try and take this thing down like Mrs. Dodds. It caught sight of Grover and charged after him, intent to snuff him out. Oh no you don't. Let's make this thing holy, Naruto yelled, while Percy took off his red jacket. Hey steroid freak, over here. This got a small chuckle from everyone, relieving a small amount of tension that had built up. That got the beast's attention back on them. Percy flung his red jacket around like Matador would do as it charged after them. However, he couldn't jump out of the way like before, so he imitated Naruto and jumped upward, going farther than usual somehow. He wondered how he did that, he couldn't chakra like Naruto so how? He shook his head and turned his attention back to the bull as it impacted the tree, one of its horns sticking in the trunk. Annabeth tapped her chin and asked, it was raining wasn't it Percy? He thought about it for a second and nodded slowly, yeah, yeah it was. She nodded and said, the rain probably gave you a power boost, which explains how you were able to jump so high. Naruto smirked as he created a swirling ball of energy in his hands and shouted, there was a reason I never showed you this before. Rasengan. He slammed the ball into the side of the creature. It flew a few feet away at an odd angle because as it flew, its horn broke off. Percy quickly ripped it out, hoping to use it as a makeshift weapon. Naruto was about to tell him not to bother with until he saw the Minotaur getting back up. Looking in horror, they saw the huge hole in the gut of the beast but it seemed to be healing up quickly. The demigods shuddered, finding the very idea of watching that disgusting. Before they do anything however, it charged at them again. It swung at Percy and sent him a few feet away, knocking the air out of him. It did the same to Naruto but he rolled with the blow so it would not do as much damage. Jumping back at it, he activated the seal on his pants, took out a kanai, channeled chakra to it, and sliced the remaining horn off, making it cry out in rage. Percy chuckled, old beef brain isn't gonna like that one bit. Seeing that Percy was getting back up, he thought quickly. Normal attacks don't do a lot of damage but it does have a nasty scar from my Rasengan. Maybe it doesn't heal all the way, what if using its horns will work? He then stabbed the horn into the old wound and it twisted harshly. It cried out in agony when he did that and it seemed that it was not healing at all. He quickly jumped over it and on its back, stabbing it in the neck. Percy. Stab for the heart. The heart. He yelled out, struggling to stay on. Ares nodded. Best place to stab lots of blood and quick death. Athena just sighed, having given up trying to stop her brother's blood lust years ago. Percy seemed to get the idea and quickly ran up to it, avoiding the massive flailing arm that were trying to get Naruto off of it. He stabbed it hard and it cried out before it burst into the same crap Mrs. Dodds did. Collapsing to his knees, he felt the rush of adrenaline wear off and the feeling of losing his mother was starting to crash down on him. Naruto picked up Percy they supposed each other until they got to Grover. Come on, we gotta get to that house, we won't be out of the woods until we do, Naruto said as he threw Grover over his shoulder while the two demigods supported each other as the rain has suddenly stopped. Percy mumbled, if I wasn't so out of it I would have noticed that. The other demigods snickered, knowing that Percy's first year at camp he was clueless. When they got to the porch, Naruto fell to his knees and it seemed that Percy was barely conscious. The weight of the two in the battle was just now getting to him. Ah, uh, I'm so much weaker. I haven't fought in a long time, Naruto thought to himself. Looking up, he saw the familiar face of Mr. Brunner, who was giving them a serious look. He also a very pretty blonde-haired girl, whose hair looked curled like a princess's. Said Princess Cut Girl was pouting and grumbling, it is not princess-like, it's functional, he grumbles trailed off as a certain seaweed brain secretly kissed her cheek. One of them has to be it, they just have to, the girl said. Silence. Annabeth, Mr. Brunner said. They're still conscious. Bring them inside. Yes, they would be very helpful if you don't mind, Naruto replied weakly, catching them off guard. Going inside, Naruto helped the girl named Annabeth put Percy and Grover on different cots in the room. Um, my name is Annabeth Chase by the way, the girl said with a small smile. Naruto cracked his back and said with a weak smile, Naruto Uzumaki, and if you don't mind, 
I am about to lose consciousness. Annabeth had wide eyes as she watched him put his back to the cot and say, Good night, before falling down, out like a light. Still never ceases to amaze me, Mr. Brunner suddenly said, making the girl jump. Which one? All three. They protected each other in that school I went to. Naruto seems to be a natural fighter though, he replied, but considering where he from, I am not surprised. Chiron raised an eyebrow. Oh, apparently I know of his homeland. Interesting. Where? Oh, I am sure he will tell you and the rest of the camp later. Come and get me when one of them wakes. Mr. Brunner said as he left. Now Annabeth was even more curious. Talia shivered, oh boy. A curious Annabeth is a creepy Annabeth. Annabeth scoffed, I am not creepy. Talia just raised an eyebrow, you wanted to dissect a monster when we were traveling to see how they, and I quote, go poof. Annabeth just blushed and refused to look anyone in the face. 4x Naruto woke up with a start as he bolted up in the bed he was in. That scared the crap out of Annabeth, who had just walked in. Ah. Don't do that. Hey, sorry. Naruto said while scratching the back of his head. He looked at the horn he was still holding and then to Percy, who was still out of it. He brought a hand up to his chin and said, so all of that crap did happen. Yep, sighed Annabeth. I still can't believe you two were able to kill that monster. Naruto smirked and said, believe it. Anyway, knowing that names have power around here, I will just call it the bull freak on steroids. This got even more laugher, with Percy making a mental note to call the beefhead that next time. Annabeth stared at Naruto for a long time, making him a bit uncomfortable, until she let out a laugh, which was followed by another laugh from Mr. Brunner. Good to see you again old man, Naruto commented. Before Annabeth could correct him, Mr. Brunner chuckled and said, Naruto, here I am called Chiron. The look on Naruto was priceless. He was still smiling but he had the, oh shit, smile. Oh, so where is your horse half? This is a magical wheelchair to when I want to go out, I use this to hide my true self, the now dubbed Chiron replied. Oh, that makes sense. So, how long was I out? You just got here last night. That is why I said you shouldn't even be up, Annabeth said. Oh, well, I have always been a really fast healer. I thought it was because of the fox, but, he trailed off as he saw Annabeth gave him a look of confusion while Chiron had a serious look on his face. Chiron's eyes narrowed as he thought, I know more than I thought. I seem to have correctly guessed his meaning rather easily. I take it you have no clue what I am talking about. No, the blonde girl said. I have an idea. Fox is known as the Kyubi, correct? Chiron asked. Why yeah, how do you know about that in this world? Naruto asked with narrowed eyes while Annabeth looked even more confused. I hear things when I got to the annual meets of the gods. Some speak about going to a world that the Lord of the Dead banished the beast known as the Kraken to. Though it may be long gone thanks to a man called the Six Paths Sage, it's remained. They were known as the Tailed Beasts and the Kyubi was the strongest of them all, Chiron explained. They even spoke of people who were forced at birth to hold these beasts in their bodies via a seal and you were one of them. Yeah. So what of it? Naruto asked. Only a demigod can handle the power of the Kyubi within their body but not any old demigod, no a child of the big three, or one's descendants. Athena frowned and thought, only a child or descendant. But there were nine total, how many children have we had in the other world? You are in the same boat as Percy. If you are indeed a child of the big three, then one of you has to decide the fate of the world at a later time as said in a prophecy of the oracle. Naruto held up a hand for him to stop. I am not interested nor do I want to decide the fate of the world. If what you say is true then, I will leave it to Percy, he is a good kid, I am sure he will do the right thing. As for me deciding that, well, as an old friend says, it is way too troublesome. Zeus had an irritated look as he said, you cannot just shove a prophecy onto another. Hades just smiled smugly and said, well, my child apparently did. I see. Just know that the prophecy says the time will come when the demigod is 16, so we have time, Chiron replied. Naruto's eyes widened and he inwardly groaned before saying, Well, nothing is set in stone, he then tried to get up but felt kind of weak. Great, one major fight and I am out. I need to get back in shape. He then thought back to what Chiron said. Hey, if I am a kid of the big three, whose am I? Mine, Hades said, feeling very smug about having such a powerful demigod. 
Ru, meanwhile, was beginning to get very irritated with the constant interruptions. If most of them weren't by the gods she might have snapped. We have an idea, but we must keep quiet until they claim you. Besides, being one of the big three's kids is kind of bad, Chiron stated. Why? Because, they swore an oath after World War II that they would not have kids anymore, Annabeth answered for him. Naruto snorted, well, we can see how that worked out. Hera gave a slight glare at the three present demigods who were living proof of the broken oaths, well, except Hades since he was born before the oath. Yes, Chiron smirked. Annabeth, will you please get some ambrosia and nectar? It should help him recover faster. As she left, he noticed Naruto looking at him oddly. It is the food of the gods. Normal human can't eat it or they will die. Demigods eat it because it helps the recover and it is good for them. Ah, was Naruto's smart reply. Oh and I almost forgot. These are yours now, use them wisely, Chiron said as he took out those familiar lucky charms of his. Percy gave a light glare at Chiron and said, and you couldn't have given me Riptide earlier because? Chiron just smiled sadly and said, I figured you want more time to get used to the camp and get over what happened to your mother. Naruto is already trained, so my other probably felt he could handle it all a bit better. Percy nodded slightly after a minute, agreeing with Chiron somewhat. Taking them, Naruto asked, so these actually turn into those blades I was using at the museum? Yes and they each hold half of the Kraken's power so please be careful. Huh? Your father had the smith god forge them from its raw power. Oh, Naruto as he took the bracelets and put them on. Then Annabeth came in with the bowl of some golden liquid, shrugging as it was better than nothing he took and bite and tasted an all too familiar taste. Could it be, was he right about it after all? I it, it tastes just like Ichiraku's ramen. He yelled out with anime years, making Annabeth take a step back at his suddenly loud voice that didn't even wake up Percy. Chiron just chuckled nervously. Kashina squealed and said, Oh, we taste the same thing when drinking nectar. She swooned as she proclaimed, Ramen must have been invented by the gods. It couldn't have come from anywhere else. Everyone was shocked and thought, My gods, holy us, it's genetic? So how do you feel? Chiron asked. Hum, like I could fight Zabuza Momochi, demon of the bloody mist and come out on top. Naruto said as he got up. He noticed he still had his kanai pouch on and put the horn in it and seal it all back up, making Annabeth's eyes go wide. What the, she let out. Naruto looked at her oddly before saying, seals, very useful. Indeed, Chiron commented with a smirk. Now I will have a camper show you the cabin for later. Then you come back here. When Percy wakes up I will tell more about this as I don't want to say this twice. Fair enough. Naruto as he follow him out the door. Annabeth. Please continue to watch Percy please, Chiron ordered while the girl nodded, still wondering about those seals. Once outside, Naruto raised an eyebrow. This place was pretty big. He looked around to see that the hill with the pine tree was not far from them. He felt odd looking at it, like he was being pulled towards it. He shook the feeling off for the moment and looked ahead to see a bunch of cabins in a U-shaped arc. Chiron, not noticing Naruto's small distraction, called out to a he saw a girl walking by, Clarice. Come here please. Ru smiled and said, I finally come into the story, it's about time too. Ares and Clarice nodded, agreeing completely. The girl turned her head and saw Chiron and one of the new guys everyone was talking about. She smirked and walked over. Naruto noticed that she was pretty tall, strong looking, and probably a year or two older than him. She was not totally ugly, she looked gruff and had the look of a fighter. What? Came her response when she arrived. I would like for you to show Naruto here around the cabins for the moment. I will probably have Annabeth show Naruto and Percy around camp later when the latter wakes up, Chiron stated. Ru quietly thought as she read, I never did thank Chiron for that. If he didn't make me give the tour it would have been a lot longer before I confessed. Fine. Gotta welcome the newbie anyway, she said with an evil smirk. Naruto raised an eyebrow is that. He knew that smirk, he used it when he did a prank. He guessed that she was welcoming committee. Well come on brat, she called out, already walking away. He followed her all the way to the middle of the arc of cabins. Okay, listen closely cuz I am only going to say this once. There are twelve cabins in all. Each one represents the Greek good it was made for. Their kids are the one who live in there. Since you and the runt are new and have not been claimed yet, 
you two will go to cabin 11, the Hermes cabin. Naruto nodded, Hermes did shelter a lot of people, so it made sense, and the one you're in? He asked nonchalantly. The God of War's cabin, she proclaimed while point to a red cabin. Oorah! Ares exclaimed, grinning a bit savagely. I think that's the typical army shout, don't shoot me if it's not please. Cool, Naruto replied. Right, now we have the other cabins. We got Demeter, Dionysus, Athena, Apollo, Aphrodite, Hephaestus, Hera, Zeus, Artemis and Poseidon. She said pointing to each. He looked at Zeus and Hera's and quirked an eyebrow. They got some pretty fancy cabins for nobody to use. He noticed that a Hades cabin was not there, odd since he was part of the big three. He also noticed a big space between Poseidon and Zeus's cabins. Maybe they planned on making one and forgot since they never got any kids from Hades. Hades frowned and grumbled loudly, absolutely no respect. You'd think I'd get a little for all the work I do. Kashina patted his back as best she could and said, I know Hades coon, just give it time. His siblings had the decency to look ashamed of their usual disrespect. Now, it's time to, officially, welcome you. Clarice called out, making a lot of people look toward them and they grimaced. Clarice was breaking in another newbie. Even though Naruto helped in killing the Minotaur, they felt sorry for him. She quickly reacted out and tried to grab him by the collar. Clarice smirked and said, another newbie for the crappers. Rue just shook her head, reading on instead of saying anything. Key word here is tried. She along with everyone else gasped as she grabbed a log of wood, stumbled, and fell to one knee. What the hell? She screamed in her head. Before she could get up, she felt cold metal against her neck. She glanced to the right to see Naruto was facing the other way she was and looking at her from his side and with a smirk on his face, similar to her evil one earlier. Clarice was completely stunned. No one had ever escaped her, especially when it came to the welcoming ceremony. For someone born from war, you have slow reflexes, Naruto said releasing a small bit of killer intent while still smirking. Ares had to give the kid credit, it was well thought out and lethal. Naruto was slowly, very slowly, earning the right to date his daughter. They heard a lot of people asking others how he did that and to Clarice of all people. Some noticed that he had his kanai pouch on and that he didn't have that before. Deciding to scare them, he withdrew his kanai from her neck, put it in his pouch, and sealed it away, earning a few gasps of shock as it just disappeared. Annabeth pouted. It was so unfair. Why couldn't they have something like that? It would make life so much easier if you could seal things on your person until you needed them. He shocked them even more as he stepped back and offered a hand to help Clarice up. All while that was happening Clarice was in deep shock. The hell, I have never been bested like that, she thought. Then she noticed the hand and quickly took it. She nodded her head and they walked back to the big house where Naruto came out of. Along the way, she was thinking deeply. He could be an Ares kid, if he is not I am not sure what else he could be. He beat me and could have killed me with me knowing it. What is this odd ass feeling? The demi-goddess girls who were the first to realize what was happening to Rue in the book, were shocked. Clarice, the princess of war, had a crush. Arriving at the big house, Chiron saw that Naruto looked bored and Clarice looked a little lost. He had a feeling something went wrong with her, welcome, plan and, wait, could it be that she was developing a crush for the blonde? Gods, I feel so sorry for him, the old centaur thought with a smile. At any rate, he was probably going to be hearing what happened from the other campers. Back already I see, he started, since Percy won't be fully awake until tomorrow, I would like for you to stay near here. All right then. I am going to take a nap next to the big pine tree. Say a later Chiron, Clarice. And before Chiron could say anything, Naruto had Ninja jumped up to the tree. Neither noticed that Clarice had quickly walked away with a small pink tint to her cheeks. Now all of the boys were shocked, since I'm a boy as well I can say this, we can be dense. Ares was upset that he was actually right, now he had the desire to blast a blonde. Down below at a camp the Greeks didn't know existed, a certain blonde descendant of Apollo was blasted away from his stuffed teddy bear, next victim. Naruto arrived at the tree and sat down with his back to it. This tree had been pulling at him the whole time. He idly wondered if it was cursed or something like that. Slowly falling asleep, he laid his head against the tree and was out. Whenever he slept, he had dreams but this was the most vivid dream he had ever had. He was in a large white room and he was not alone. 
A girl stood across from him, staring at him with shocked eyes. She has shoulder-length spiky black hair, and blue eyes, with freckles under her eyes, mostly on the left, and she is wearing some punk-style clothes. To him she looked beautiful. Everyone was so shocked that no one called Talia out on her blush. Um, hey. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Who are you and where are we as I know this can't be a dream? The girl gulped and said, Talia and we are in limbo. Rue closed the book and waited. Surprisingly, Percy was the first to speak and he only said three words. What, the, censored? Zeus, being one of the first to get over the shock, cleared his throat and got everyone's attention. I realize we are all confused and hungry, so I propose we break for lunch and a two hour rest. Getting nods from everyone, Zeus turned to his daughter and said, Well then, why don't we take a walk? He gave her a small smile, which she returned with a nod. Zeus and Talia the father, daughter duo walked the halls of Olympus in a slightly awkward silence. Zeus was going over anything he could bring up without triggering the temper he knew she inherited from him. Clearing his throat, he asked, So, who do I have to thank for releasing you? Talia smirked, knowing this would get under her father's skin, mainly, it'd have to be the water boy. She held in a bark of laughter when Zeus cringed at the thought of being indebted to a son of Poseidon. He frowned and grumbled, Poseidon will have a field day with this, I know it. He shook his head and sighed, all right then. So, what do you think of the story so far? She took on a thoughtful face as they stopped and sat down on some chairs Zeus summoned. It's interesting. Besides Naruto, there hasn't been that much differences between there and here. She smirked as she said, though, I have to admit, I really wish I could do that shadow clone thing. Zeus nodded, knowing what she meant. While the gods might be able to divide their consciousness to some degree, doing it for more than a day with the max separation could be a major stressor on their powers. The two began to talk about other things after that, doing some bonding that they had never been able to do before. Poseidon and Tyson Poseidon smiled happily as he listened to his youngest son, hearing about all the things he had built in the future. He had to laugh when Tyson proclaimed his stick as the best weapon ever. Poseidon soon asked about Percy, and was greeted with an even more positive speech. When Tyson finally stopped talking about how great his big brother was, he gave a small yawn. Poseidon asked, feeling tired. Getting a nod back, Poseidon conjured a waterbed big enough for the young Cyclops and said, Get some rest, my boy, I'll wake you up when it's time to read again. Tyson smiled as he laid down and said, Good night, Daddy Poseidon. Poseidon gave a small smile and kissed the Cyclops forehead, letting him sleep. Percy and Annabeth the hero of Olympus and Olympus architect had found a small spot on Olympus away from everyone else. Right now they were doing something they had been waiting to do since they got there. Something involving sweat, moving flesh, heavy breathing, and lots of loud noises. Ha! Huh. Percy yelled as Riptide slashed towards Annabeth, who rolled away and came back with several quick strikes from her dagger. Percy blocked as best he could, with the curse of Achilles absorbing the damage from anything he couldn't. Annabeth moved quickly, diving under one of Percy's swings and holding her dagger at his throat with a smirk. My wind seaweed brain, she said. Percy just smiled and said, You sure about that wise girl? Looking down slightly, he tapped Riptide against her stomach near her kidneys. She just laughed as they pulled away, putting their weapons away and calling it a draw. They sat down together. Annabeth sitting in Percy's lap as they began talking about everything that had happened in the books so far. Unseen by both, two people were watching them and feeling different emotions. One was thrilled beyond belief and the other confused on how to feel. Kashina and Rue right now, the two women from another dimension were talking privately about what was to come. Discussing what they could answer if asked. Kashina soon developed a sly smile as she asked, So, Rue, how do you think everyone will take that news? Rue blushed slightly, as she said, it'll be surprising for them, I doubt my other here has ever thought about what we all have done, she gave a small smirk as she said, but I can't wait for Zeus' reaction to it. This had both women laughing to themselves as they imagined the king of the gods' reaction. Looking at her watch, Rue said, well, we should get back to the throne room. Almost time for the next chapter. Kashina smiled brightly and said, all right, I can't wait to read more about my Naru chans life. In the throne room once everyone was seated, Rue held the book up and asked, All right, who wants to go next? Before anyone could speak, another flash of light appeared next to her. From the light, a tough and slightly censored voice announced, Mind if I give it a try? Thanks.